There's something I want you to just do, right? I want you to sell this book to him by telling him some of the wonderful things contained in this book that you might know in this book so that he will be convinced to buy it. Oh, you believe? <laughs> but what kind of book? You're selling somebody, you say you believe. Is it a book for believing? What's the title of the book, first of all? Oh, beginning PHP. <laughs> beginning PHP. Is it, is it for dancers or for... What is it? What? Huh? I don't You don't know the content. He doesn't know the content of the book. But he wants to sell the book. You, want, you used to see those people who have to say, I want to show you seven secrets to success. <laughs> But you're trying to sell him the book. Okay, tell him something in one of the chapters in the book. Or one of the things you know is inside the book. <laughs> so you can't sell him this book. Are you convinced to buy this book? At all? At all, at all. Why? He said something about the book. The book has red cover. He doesn't know what he's selling. Are you honestly don't know what you're selling? <laughs> you honestly don't know what you're selling? I don't know what I'm selling. I just, I, give you, sell. I just give you a product to sell and you don't know what you're selling. Okay, let me help you out. Let me give you this one. Sell him this one. What can you tell him about this one so that he can buy okay, it? Please, this should have it. And it will definitely help you. You know what this is all about. It's all about what you can do. So but what's inside? What makes it inside? Yeah, because it gives you um, a deeper understanding of the words. Words. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, okay. Meaning of every word you hear. Every word. Mm -hmm. Mean every word. Almost every word. Seriously. And the meaning? It gives example also. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. Sir. Ah. Yes, sir. How are you sure? I just I'm gave you sure the book. Because it's a dictionary. But I just gave it to you just now. Yes, you did. But oh, you know the. But how come you didn't know about this one? <laughs> That's because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands together and celebrate. <laughs> celebrate these great dresses. Amen. <laughs> celebrate them. I'm giving him a book for, for, for programmers. And I'm asking him to sell a PHP book. <laughs> and he, he probably doesn't even know what PHP means in the first place. What, what's the meaning of PHP? PHP is it's a, it's a self-defining term. PHP actually means PHP hypertext preprocessor. Pre, uh, pre this first P of PHP means PHP. So I'm giving him this book to sell, and he just can't sell it. You know why he can't sell this book? Because he doesn't know much about this book. So even if there are wonderful things that can be done from this book, for example, I learned programming, and I look at the programming languages when I was reading this book. In fact, I read this book several years ago. This is actually PHP 4. We are actually now using PHP version 8, right? So... I, a long time ago, I bought this one, and I did a, full, a course on PHP with this, and I have a couple of other PHP books that I read. And it's been very, very promising to me in terms of my business, in terms of working as a programmer. So, but the point was, he can't sell it because he doesn't know anything about this product. And for him to be able to sell this product, he needs to understand the product. He needs to know the product. There, is a, there are very powerful contents in this product. He can take this and argue and say, it's a very good book. The point is that the power of your being able to sell this material, right, is based on how much of this that you know. How much of this do you know? The same thing goes with some of us when we are trying to uh, preach the gospel. You know, when Jesus Christ was ascending, he left one assignment for the church, and that is go into the world and preach the gospel, right? So our general responsibility as Christians is to preach the gospel. But you know why we don't preach the gospel that much? And the reason might surprise you is because in evangelism, you are literally marketing a product. In evangelism, you're marketing a product and that product is Jesus. You are trying to sell somebody a product for free, right? You're selling, you're not collecting any money. You're actually letting people know Jesus is good for you. You need Jesus in you. You need to have Jesus and all that. But the point is, the reason some of us cannot evangelize effectively is because we haven't spent time knowing Jesus, right? We know who he is in the earth. Like I would say, if I ask him, what is this? He's going to say it's a book. Yes, that's what we know. Oh, Jesus is good. Jesus is God. We have all of those 
general understanding of who Jesus is. But why we can't really market him? Why we can't really carry out evangelism? Why we can't really win souls? The Bible says, he that winneth souls is wise. means wisdom is required to win souls, right? Why we can't really win souls is that we don't know much of Jesus. Now, you, often you will see people arguing. And you will think those who are arguing, ah, they know Bible very, very much. Oh, see, arguing theology is not the same as knowing Christ. Knowing Christ is a matter of encounter and relationship. Meaning that you have had several encounters with Jesus in your prayers, in the study of the word, in your personal experience as a believer, on your daily work. It increases what you know of Jesus. Now, if you want to tell somebody about Jesus, somehow, you might not even quote too many scriptures. From you personally as a Christian, you can say, I know who Jesus is. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, somebody who doesn't know who Jesus is, he will just be arguing about theology and religion. That's why often when you see what happens is that people are contending over doctrine. Those doctrines are not Jesus. Do you understand that? Those doctrines they are contending over, not Jesus. This pastor is going to stay on the pulpit and use his sermon time to condemn every other preacher. That is not even Jesus. For there is no condemnation now to them which are in Christ Jesus. That's not also Jesus. I could present my sector, my religion, and my section to be better than everybody else. That is not also Jesus, right? And I say, I'm a Christian. You're a Muslim. Therefore, what I believe is superior to what you believe. That's not also Christ. That's not also Jesus. It's the truth. Because Jesus Christ wouldn't come into a scenery and disqualify people based on religion. He doesn't even disqualify people based on age. He said, suffer the little children to come unto me for us, such is the kingdom of God. He didn't say, no, they have to go through process. He said, no, of such, already of such is the kingdom of God. Even when the child is not portraying the character you will endorse, he said, of those kind is the kingdom of God made. So, the doctrines we argue about, that's not Jesus. The sects we argue about, that's not Jesus. The religions we contend about, that's not Jesus. You see, because we don't know much of Jesus, we have so much hate in the system. Christ is love. Believe me, if we know more of Jesus, we will know more of love. When I gave him this to market, the first thing he did as soon as he picked this from me, he turned to the person, the customer. He turned to who he wanted to sell it to, and the first word I heard him say was, this is the dictionary. He didn't even bother reading the title. He just, this is the dictionary. He just knew it's a dictionary. He can tell you it has A, B, C, D thing in it. He's no longer going to start beating around for what relevance. He doesn't need relevance. He already has content. He already has facts and details. He can tell you you can find minutes of word. And when I said, can you get example? He quickly said yes. He didn't say, um, maybe um, yeah, something like that. No. He just quickly said yes. Why? Because he knows this product. So selling this product is easy. It doesn't require argument. It requires proof. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Evidence meaning proof. So he can't be struggling with anybody. If I come to you and I say Jesus is love, I, I shouldn't be arguing with you that Jesus is love. Really, it's not necessary. Because I know the product I'm trying to market, right? I know the person I am talking about. So when I say Jesus is love, I'm telling you Jesus is love not just because of the Bible, but because of I am a beneficiary of the love of Jesus Christ. So by presenting two products like this, I simply am trying to say, which of this product does he know better? And he doesn't know this one better because he has never had any kind of relationship with this. He has never even studied this. He has never even read this. But if I give every one of you this one to go and read right now, because you are all somehow familiar with this one, it's easy. In fact, I can say that most of you, most of you do not have this in your houses, but you have this in your houses. And so, how much of Jesus do you know? That is a core thing. That's the, the coffin. Evangelism is easy. Evangelism is easy. If, for example, you know this television very well and somebody comes around and says, ah, I want to buy a television set too. I don't know. This is your television set. How is it like? Do you know because you know this TV very well, you're going to start telling him the positives and the negatives about this television. Right? So you don't, you don't search for words because you know the TV. Do you understand? You don't search. You're not afraid. You're, oh, no, this one, no, it's, not, it's not a very good product too. Oh, it's a very good product. I've been using it for two, three years. Why? Because you personally know it. You're not even talking about what is in the manual. You're talking about out of your own knowledge. That's how evangelism is. Every believer is expected to evangelize. Every believer. When you begin to evangelize, you open doors for miracles in your life. 
When he said, go into the world and preach the gospel, right? These signs shall follow them that believe. He said, every time he told them, told them preach the gospel, he said, signs will follow. Why miracles don't happen in the present day church is that we like to be very religious. We like to condemn others. We like to judge others. We like to sit down and look at ourselves superior to other people. We want to come out and tell people, oh, my church is better than your church because my church is bigger than your church. You know? And these are not Christianity. All of this, none of this is Christianity because they are not a reflection of who Jesus is. Jesus is a reflection of love. You see somebody, you show love. When we come to that point when we say we really know Jesus, we will be able to put the gospel without searching for words. You are in your business place and somebody comes and is talking with you and they start discussing. Right? Some persons will know football very well. In less than two or three sentences, they have brought a football into the picture. Have you seen how conversations change over time? You met somebody and you're discussing about uh, security. All of a sudden, you're now discussing about the government. Then all of a sudden, you're now discussing about Ronaldo. Then you're now discussing about how is that happening? Someone in that conversation is changing the subject matter of that conversation based on what he knows. And every single time he introduces what he knows, you start by security. Then the person now says, huh? All these things, the government is supposed to be able to get police to do this. Then all of a sudden, you all forget that you were talking about security. Because the person has just brought a subject matter that he knows, you start listening to him. In the next five minutes, you are now talking about the government. Then while he's talking about the government, he now says, this government don't even know how to play this game. They just be talk, doing it randomly. They don't know how to play game. Imagine football, for example, Ronaldo and Messi and the rest. Eventually, as he mentioned Ronaldo and Messi, and Messi is there and Ronaldo score. This one will say, Messi cannot score Ronaldo. Ronaldo cannot score Messi. Before you realize it, that person has actually brought something else that he knows. And they've started talking about football. That football talk will last another 10 to 15, 20 minutes. Eh? Before they will now say and the rest. Even this Messi, the match I was watching the other day, I was, I, I don't finish the match, as I was watching Nepal sees power. Nepal sees power. This uh, Nepal is very, very useless. Imagine other developed countries. Now we have started talking about developed countries. Now, in the same way, even when you're selling goods in your shop, in your business place in the market, you can take a conversation, right, and shift it to what is relevant for discussion. What is relevant for this? Every conversation metamorphoses based on the speakers. Every conversation. Unless it's a tailored conversation. So if I know God and I know Jesus, it's easy for me to introduce him to any conversation and evangelism is done. Are you understand what I'm saying? Evangelism. evangelism is not that I have to oh, necessarily carry a big Bible. <clears throat> you will die. I say you will die and go to hell fire. In, if you continue to be a sinner, you will die. And the fire will be very, very hot. And we burn you. Some people can come out and beat you up. Because the gospel, Christ asked us to preach the gospel. He didn't ask us to go and threaten the world. What you're doing right now is not the gospel. It's called threats. I'm a Christian. When was the last time you really evangelized? If you have not done that, it's because you don't understand the product. You don't understand the person. That's it. You want to understand theology. Oh, when I go to Bible school, I'll be able to preach very well. No, that's theology. Oh, when I go to church and they now make me an elder or an evangelist. <laughs> when I'm an evangelist, I will preach. No, that's religion. But when I know Jesus, I can speak of Jesus. I can express Jesus. I can pray over the sick with Jesus. Because I know Jesus. So when I want to talk about Jesus, I don't search for words. I'm not lost. I can tell you from my personal experience, even when I can't quote too many scriptures, I can tell you, wait, this is Jesus I want to talk about. I know I'm not very sound with quoting this verse, this chapter, this verse, that, but I can tell you that I know this Jesus. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he what? Corrupt with flatterings. The second part is what I'm more concerned with. Can we all read that together? Daniel 11 verse 32. Are we there? Can we read that together? The second part. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. 33 says, And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. They that understand about the people shall do what? Shall instruct many. Yet people will still be perishing, we understand. But they that know their God shall be what? 
What is strong? What is strength? Confident. Confident. They shall be confident. They shall be stable. Talk about confidence there. They shall be confident, strong, and do exploit because they do what? They know their God. Question is, as a true Christian, every single moment of your life is spent knowing Jesus. Knowing Jesus. And let me just seal it with this text in the book of John chapter 17. Let me just, let me seal it up with this text. Let's read it. John 17 verse 3. I'm sealing it up with this one and I just want you to understand the essence of why it is important to know who Jesus is. I didn't call, we didn't come to church. We don't come to church. No, not here. We don't come here to be like religious folks. We come here to be true Christians and true Christians means knowing Jesus. And knowing Jesus makes it easy for you to speak about Jesus anywhere and everywhere. And as an evangelist, which the Bible says, do you work on evangelists? Look at verse 3 of John 17. It says this. And this is a life eternal. Oh, what is eternal life? What do we call eternal life? Eternal life, is it what I said on the altar when I came to repent? Or is it eternal life that I come to church? No, what is eternal life? He said, and this is life eternal. What is that? That they may know thee. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Can somebody explain that to me? What is eternal life? Knowing Jesus. What is eternal life? Knowing God, knowing Jesus. So, wait, 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 wait one minute. Wait, wait. The knowledge that I have of Jesus, that knowledge inside me, is what is defined as eternal life. Okay. Do you have eternal life inside of you and you will live forever in the kingdom of God? How do you know that? It's the knowledge of Jesus inside of you that is called eternal life. Meaning that the one who has absolutely no knowledge of Jesus Christ does not have eternal life. He might come to church, sit down, say, oh, that's my pastor. That's my pastor. I like <laughs> I like my pastor. He's a very powerful preacher. When my pastor preaches, he slides on the pulpit. Then he slides on the pulpit. Then he talk, when you hear my pastor talking, he knows his pastor. Are you listening to me? but he does not know Jesus. Huh. But that's not eternal life. He knows his church, his local church, but he does not know Jesus, the head of the church. That's not eternal life. He knows they are Christians. Ah, we are Christians. You are Muslim. Jesus Christ, are we, are, we are Christians, but he doesn't know Jesus. That's not eternal life. He knows how to quote scriptures. Even the devil came tempting Jesus. He came quoting scriptures. But he didn't know Jesus. Because knowing Jesus is a personal relationship. Uh, he didn't know who Jesus was. But he could quote scriptures. So coming to quote scriptures and argue with scriptures and make noise. It's not the knowledge of Christ. He said, listen, this is eternal life. Are those words written in red in your Bible? Are they written in red? Meaning they are the words of Christ. That is Jesus Christ himself said, I will came to give you eternal life. I'm explaining to you that it is the knowledge of me that you have in you that is eternal life. So when you don't know me, you just don't have the life at all. But I'm in church. Oh, sorry. That's why he said he will say to some of them, depart from me, I don't know you. Why do I know you? I don't know you. But we prophesied in your name. Yeah, prophecy, anybody can prophesy, but I just don't know you because when I look inside of you, I can't see my life in you. What's my life? The knowledge of me. You don't know me. You know prophecy, but you don't know me. You know visions, but you don't know me. You know predictions, you don't know me. You don't know me. But, but how, do, how, is, how is it that you say we don't know you? He said, when I was in prison, did you identify? Could, could you? Could you? When I was in prison, could you identify me in prison? Uh, you couldn't even come when I was in prison. You didn't even see me in prison. You don't even know me. I was that guy in prison. You don't know me. Are you understanding that? And you say, say, well, but when I, was, when I was naked, when I was naked, you saw me naked and the rest, you, don't, you, didn't, you didn't know me. You didn't do anything about it. You, you don't know me. I was naked, you didn't even know me. Oh. I was sick, you didn't visit me. Oh, well, they said, wait, 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 wait. How, when, when, did we, when did we see you in all of these places and we did not? That's what I'm talking about. That's the point. The point is you don't even know me. Then I ask you, okay, when did we see, when were you, what, what, when, when did it happen? Jesus, no, 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 it never happened. I know I'm, I'm a man of God. I'm a man of God. I couldn't have seen you naked. I don't give you clothes. He said, listen, as you did to one of these little ones, one of the least ones, did, you, you didn't know you were doing it to me. And entering heaven is a product of knowledge. Entering heaven, what qualifies you for heaven is you know him. And when you come to heaven, he should be able to know you. So he says, wait. Depart from me, I know you not. Wait one minute. So, 
We don't know him, so we don't have eternal life. And when judgment comes, why do you go to hell? Because he doesn't know you. But he's God. He's supposed to know me. Oh, no, no, no. God made you. God doesn't know everyone. That's why he says, he's going to say, depart from me, I know you what? I know you not. But God Almighty, you're omniscient. Yes, in my omniscient nature, you don't exist in my knowledge. This is how serious knowledge is. That if you must be a true Christian, begin now to know Jesus. And knowing Jesus makes the whole difference. You can know your church, know your pastor, know your doctrines, know your religion, know your sex, know whatever you want to know, but you're still empty until you truly, on a personal base, know Jesus. And you know Jesus is going to be demonstrative and when those who know their God shall be strong and do, and do, and do, and do. Because there is no knowledge of Christ that is not followed by an exploit, an action that is recognizable by heaven. That's why he said, when I was naked, you did nothing. That means you don't know me. When I was hungry, you did nothing. That means you don't know me. I was in prison. You did that. that means you don't know me. I was in, you, you don't know me. Because re action is required. And that's why he says, go out for evangelism and preach the gospel. Take that knowledge in which you have and let the world also know that you know this product. So at the end of the day, this person will also say, I know you. Rise on your feet and let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Give him all the praise and thank him for your life. I said, today I know you, Jesus. I come to know you. Paul said that I may know him. That I may know him. The power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, be made conformable unto his death. The things that were gained to me, I count them the dongs for the knowledge, the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, of whom I've suffered the loss of all things. I come to know who Jesus is.